Okay, so here's my ironing board. It is more than six feet long and three feet wide, and there's tons of cubby holes for all of my supplies. My batting kind of overtook the shelving because my cabinets were getting too full of fabric, so I had to move all of my batting out of my cabinet, and I had to have a place to put them, so I just shoved them in there. <laughs> it is my laundry room right there behind me. So I've got my backing on the ironing board and I've got my quilt top on there and I will set up my camera on the tripod so we can get going on the next step. I just checked the width of my fabric against the width of this and for what I want to do for the binding this is going to be too short. So what I'll have to do is piece my back together. Wait, 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 wait. Nope, I had it laying out the wrong way. I've got about six inches on this side and five, five and a half and five and a half. So in my case, this is what I need. This will, this will be perfect. So what I'll do is get this part out so that I can cut that part. Well, actually, I'll just make a clip and rip it. And then I'm going to press this iron, this fabric flat. So if you want to do this binding that I'm going to show you, this is what you want to do. I should mention, just in case I get any questions on the ironing board top, I bought the I bought the ironing board fabric from Joann's, and I had an old wool blanket that was my dad's when he was in the army, and it was moth-eaten in a couple spots. So I cut that up, and we stapled it to the plywood and then I covered it with the fabric from Joann's. You could use regular batting if you wanted to make your own ironing board. Just get a piece of plywood maybe a quarter of an inch thick. It, you know it's a great project for doing small ironing boards. If you just want a tabletop version layer a couple pieces of batting down put that Teflon ironing board fabric on and you're good to go and it won't ruin your tabletop. Okay, this is all set, so I'm going to push this back, and I'm going to get my batting to match the size of this. Now, there's a right side and a wrong side to this batting if you uh, didn't know that. They punch needles, and the, the right side is smooth, and the back side has these little nubs. So we want this to face the bottom side of the quilt, so I have to turn this over. I'm going to give it just a light steam. Ideally, you want to let this set out. You open it up and let it set out for 24 hours. But I'm not, I'm not patient. Okay, I am going to let this set to cool, so I will be back shortly. Okay, I've clipped the other side of my board with the fabric and the batting and now I'm going to lift this up and I'm just going to pull my hands out you don't want to tug because then that's going to distort the fabric and it's going to bounce back as soon as you uh, remove the clip so I'm going to do the center And do the same thing with I'm just kind of like wiping the fabric and I'm going from the center out and now I'm going to put a clip near the center and I'm going to do the same thing on the corners and I apologize I can't get my camera up any higher so you can't see a better view I think I've got this. So now I'm clipping the top down to the batting. Okay, these straight pins have to go. So, and this is where my glue basting thread comes in, or glue baste it.
Okay, so now I'm going to get out some pins. Got my quilt all pinned. And now the first thing we're going to do is go just do some stitching in the ditch. We're going to start in the middle first. Get everything out of your way. Put my needle right there in the ditch. Lower the presser foot. And we're going to just sew straight down. And I'm going to slow the speed on my machine because I don't want to just take off. Because I like to push the gas pedal all the way to the floor. <laughs> my stitch length is set at three. And again, I am looking at this just in front of the foot. I'm not watching the needle. I'm guiding this seam right straight into that groove right there. And I'm putting my hands on either side of the line and I'm just guiding it. My hands are just resting, but my, at the same time, I'm kind of pulling it, pulling it out. I really like this machine for the fact that the harp, or um, I think today now they call it a throat, is really wide. So if you have a smaller throat, you're going to want to roll your fabric up so that it will fit as you're sewing straight lines with a quilting foot. Now normally what I would do is, I would go back and I would do this line and then go back and do the other line on the other side but I want to show you I don't want to take the time to do that right now so I'm going to sew down the center that would be this seam right here the reason why I want to show you this is because when I get to this cross section here you want to make sure that you're not going to get any pleat from underneath okay now I'm going to give this a tug this way Give this a tug this way, and I'm going to pull at the same time down and out. Perfect. I didn't get a pleat when I sewed it across. So now what you'll do is you'll finish sewing those straight seams. I decided I was going to go ahead and baste the outer edge after I got all of the cross beams done. And I'm going to show you. On my presser foot, I took a permanent marker and I measured a quarter inch from the needle out to here and a quarter inch from the needle out to here. So when I get to this corner, you'll see why I do that, why I did that. I'm going to stop when this fabric reaches that quarter inch mark. So there's no, oh, well, that didn't work. <laughs> Okay, now I'm at a quarter inch. There's no guesswork involved as into where am I, am I close? So I'm just gonna baste around here and uh, then we will start sewing the foldovers. So we'll see in a little second. We're gonna take one side and we're gonna pull it in as far as it'll go without distorting the fabric. And we're just gonna check to make sure that this up here covers the point now, as some of you may have noticed, this is not an authentic, quote, quote, unquote, an authentic cathedral windows quilt. There's a way to do that. But it's a different technique. I like, actually, like having that circle come up in the center. It makes a like a secondary pattern. We're going to top stitch. Now, if you want to do a blanket stitch, that's fine. I'm going to do just a straight stitch. I'm going to turn my base, my sewing stitch down, down to 2 millimeters. 2.0. 
and I'm going to slow way down because I don't want this to get ahead of me. All right, so now on this side, I'm going to try to imagine where my seam is going to go in. So we're just going to do a few stitches here. Oh. Do a few stitches. And I'm going to keep my fabric, I'm going to keep my eye on my fabric right here and try to keep the fold right at that same spot. The idea behind this sewing here is to just be as consistent as possible. If you go off just a hair here and there every once in a while, nobody's going to notice that, I swear. I've made so many quilts and everyone, everyone never sees the mistakes. So don't point them out. Let, just let them enjoy the beauty of the quilt and know that it was made with love. Sweet! Look at that! Isn't that cool? Alright, now what you'll do is the same thing. Starting up here, going all the way down. So, nice, right? When you pin, you want to just make sure that this covers up the point of your fabric. You don't want any raw fabric showing. So I'm going to finish this quilting off camera. You've seen this now, so you can do that. And we will come back when it's time to bind. Yay! I've got a different angle here because I want to get a close-up. I want to show you how I mark off. I'm, I've already done three sides. I've marked out two inches and I cut off the batting at the line and I left the backing fabric. So on this one we have to do the same thing but what I want to do is put my two inch mark of my ruler right there right there and on the third one and if they're off, I'm going to take the first one and the third one. I take my two-inch mark, and I'm going to eyeball it on that first one. There's the second, and there's the third. Okay, so luckily those lined up really well. In order to cut this fabric off, I'm going to fold it back because I don't want to take any chances of cutting, I don't want to take any chances of cutting that while I'm cutting the batting. And now, I want to have a two inch binding, but in order to have a two inch binding, you've got to make allowances for seam allowance. So there's two and a quarter folding over, clear over to this fold or the, where the seam is going to be. And then we're going to make, add another quarter inch, which makes this two and a half inches. So now what I need to do is Mark this two and a half inches and cut it all off. Now, what we're going to do is pull this over. All the way down the length. So now we're just going to... Fold it over and adjust until we get to the point. 
And then we're going to stick a pin right there. So now we're going to do the same thing with this one here. Okay, are you ready to see how we're going to do this? <coughs> the easiest way I know is to fold this corner up like that. And then we're going to chop off just enough so that it doesn't come into the seam allowance. All right, now we're going to open that back up. And now on this side, we're going to bring the fabric up. Fold it in for our seam allowance. And we're going to take a pin and we're going to put it just where the quarter inch fold will be, where the where it's going to come into a 45 degree angle. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side. Get that right up against the cotton batting and I'm not stretching it I'm just laying it out now my quarter inch again just like that okay now you can do either side first it doesn't matter so we're gonna fold this back get that fabric down fold this back make sure that there are no excess bunches bunching going on in there get my scissors out of the way and I'm going to give that a pin now I'm going to do the same thing with this side fold that in push that down as far as it'll go and bring it right up to the point where that's going to meet and pin it and you got this big old bubble here well that's easy to fix you just wet your finger a little bit adjust the fabric as it pulls back and smooth that out in there We're almost there. And voila. So I'm going to put a pin here. Shall we do it one more time? Okay, I've offset my needle just a hair to the right, and I'm going to actually guide my fabric into the center of this. Let me get my, right through the center. That's what I'm going to aim for. Whether I stay there, who knows? So this should give me a nice eighth of an inch seam.
Okay, let's look at that corner. Not too bad. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was in camera view. They should have taken one more stitch on this side so that it came right in the middle. But as you see, as I poke that down, it disappears. So when I do the whip stitching along this seam right here, all the way up, you'll never see that. Now, we, all we have left to do is the hand stitching. And I, I'm, I'm not gonna do that on camera. <laughs> But we need to remove the basting. So we're just going to cut the thread only every four or five stitches or so. And now on the front side, we've got some thread we can pull off. So you're just going to do this all the way around your quilt. All right, here it is. All finished. I like it. Is it perfect? No. Is it well made, well constructed? Absolutely. This will go through 100 washes and still be okay. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys learned a lot from this. And you'll give this pattern a try. And make it your own. Alright. Like, subscribe, share. All of that good stuff. It helps my channel. It doesn't cost you anything. And we will see you next time. Love you. Bye-bye.